Andy, let's start with you. Uh, two year investigation. The hammer comes down somewhat today, at least the beginning of charges. Give us a little bit of a timeline here. Well, this investigation really began about two years ago, and you know, Eric, uh, for the last two years, we have been tracking uh, rumors and innuendos about some kind of a grand jury investigation, some kind of a federal investigation involving the FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the IRS. It turns out all three federal agencies were involved, and we just could not narrow down exactly what their focus was. I can tell you right now, Judge Mark Chivarella and Michael Conahan are going to prison. However, sources close to the case tell me without a doubt, more arrests are likely and expected expected very soon. This could be just a tip of the iceberg. But again, the bottom line is they steered money, taxpayer money, into PA Child Care Center. They helped get it built, and they also issued court orders to make sure that it was the only game in town. They had the, the original juvenile detention center on the North River Street closed, so the kids had nowhere else to go. Not only that, the accusations are that the judges even refused to listen to probation services, kids who could be not on detention were sent to out of probation rather were sent to detention center in Piston Township so again wide ranging when you talk about abuse of power the investigators told me this is these two guys are the poster boys for the abuse of power and uh, some quite frankly Eric are not surprised at all that uh, this came down but again more arrests are likely in this ongoing investigation uh, again this I'm told is just a tip of the iceberg all right, and, and Matt, we were talking uh, before the break, uh, um, many of these accusations are heinous, but the idea of sending kids to a juvenile center uh, for money. I, that's the word I used, Eric, and, and heinous is what it is. It, uh, it, we heard a report earlier today that, uh, I think it came from one of the newspapers, that it's, it's a possibility that Judge Chivarella won't plead guilty to all of the items in the information. And my guess is that's the one. Th this is an indictment that comes on several levels, uh, and probably the worst one is the idea that these men took money to send children to jail. And remember, uh, uh, these are children that were unrepresented. That is so un-American, it's unspeakable. And I want to talk to you quickly. I know the, uh, the state Supreme Court, uh, the judicial, uh, the juvenile law center wanted to represent these kids, wanted to have these uh, looked at. They said no. They said no to that. They, apparently, they said no to recommendations from uh, uh, parole advisors uh, that, that they not be incarcerated, uh, and, and they ignored that. David, you've been following uh, county politics for a long time in Luzerne County. Anything like this? Any precedent? And is it even possible to reestablish faith in the court system? Well, the last time we had a judge under investigation and indictment was Judge D'Alessandro in the early 19, in the late 1980s, and that was a tax fraud issue. Nothing like the scope of this. These guys had a monopoly on the child services, and the long range political implications of this are just staggering. You have to ask the question, okay, what's going to happen with Judge Lakuta? Okay, is she going to try to uh, be reinstated? Uh, what's going to happen when these two judges resign? You're going to have five judicial openings in one year. And uh, restoring the faith, um, we always seem to bounce back, but this is a big hit. It's a historic day. A lot of people feel it's a good day because the light well, finally you say is a shy. lot of people feel it's a good day. I want to hear from some, yeah. of the, some of the viewers here. Joni from Kingston on the line. Joni, thanks for calling in. Thank you for having me. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that, um, well, everyone knows out in this valley, if you've been here a long time, that um, the courthouse has been corrupt for years. And it's about time that they start cleaning it out. And I hope Judge Lakuda does come back. I think they did her a raw deal. And um, just that I hope these two people, the judges, they don't go to a country club. I hope they, I hope they fry. Well, I don't think they'll fry. We'll talk about where they might be sentenced in a bit. Joe from Scranton on the line. Joe, thanks for calling in. Joe, are you there? All right, I'm not here. Not hearing from Joe, so let's grab an email. We have this written to us. When do these two gentlemen go behind bars? The corruption in Luzerne County is disgraceful. How much money do the prosecutors hope to recover from the theft? We'll answer all these questions when we return. It is time for us to take a break right now. Before we go, let's check in with Lyndall. Eric, thank you. Luzerne County judges Mark Chivarella and Michael Conahan will go to prison for the charges brought against them, but that's not the full extent of their punishment. Judges have stipulated to serve a sentence of 87 months, just over seven years, in federal prison. The judges have further agreed to resign their positions on the bench 
within 10 days of the acceptance of their guilty pleas, and to consent to automatic disbarment from the practice of law, as well as to pay restitution in an amount to be determined by the court. We will talk much more about it right after this short break. Welcome back. Our interactive topic tonight, corruption at the courthouse. We had an email from a viewer that, Andy, they want to know when these judges will be sentenced, how long they'll be in jail, and how much restitution will they have to pay? What insight can you give us into that? Well, that, they're very good questions. They were questions we asked at that news conference today. And quite frankly, they had no definite answers. Uh, they're estimating as far as going to prison could be sometime in the spring. They'll give the judges time uh, to get their life in order, get their uh, personal effects in order. And again, they're going to spend just over seven years in prison. As far as restitution is concerned, you would like to think, again, at least our opinion, uh, our questions were, would they have to pay back the $2.6 million? That remains to be seen. The U.S. Attorney uh, Carlson said that it's up to the judge who's going to uh, hand down the final determination. Again, the bottom line is the opinion of many people in that news conference was to pay the full amount uh, back. But again, I have to point this out also. I asked the question, why were the judges here today? Because many in the public were asking me the last several days, if they are arrested, will they have the walk of shame? In other words, if you steal a loaf of bread, you're walked down the pipe. Uh, what the attorney said to me today was they're being treated as any other white collar criminal. They're allowed to show up later and uh, uh, enter their formal guilty plea, that should happen within several days or weeks at the earliest. But again, we will see the judges here at the federal court. We'll keep you posted on that. As far as the other questions go, quite frankly, they're still open-ended, uh, but we'll have to re that remains to be seen what the judge will decide here in federal court. Keep your eye on it, Andy. Tom from Jenkins Township on the line. Tom, thanks for calling in. How you doing? My, my comment is this. Kids that were sent there that shouldn't have been there and parents paid, how do they get reimbursed for this if they were wrongly accused of being there. Well, that's a state court issue we talked about. It is. There, there really are three levels of money restitution we're talking about here. Number one, what Andy was just talking about, and under the, uh, it's right there in the plea agreement, by the way, paragraph 12, Mandatory Restitution Act, federal judge has a duty to order full restitution uh, wherever and whenever possible. Uh, secondly, uh, there's no limitation on the victims uh, to sue the judges, and I'm afraid also to sue Luzerne County for civil rights violations. What about well. the taxpayers themselves? I mean, it, these allegations go back to 2003, 2004. These guys weren't operating in the public interest. It, could they forfeit their salaries for well, those years? Well, that's right. And that's the third level I meant to mention, and that is the IRS retains the right to, to collect the back taxes that obviously was not paid on this $2.6 million. When, uh, as federal taxpayers, we're all ent entitled to, to regain that money from, from these, uh, these defendants. But what about the salaries themselves? There's, there, I mean, they clearly weren't working in the public interest during those years. Well, it, uh, probably the more, in, they won't collect the back salary. Uh, that, I don't see that happening. What the more interesting issue is, is what about the pension going forward? And that's a whole different topic. We'll talk about that at 7 o'clock right now. I want to hear from Nancy from Laughlin. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, this has been going on for years and years, and I'm not surprised at all that this has happened to these two judges. A group of us tried to start home rule back in 2001, and it got defeated by only about a couple thousand votes in 2003. I think it's way past time now we start again. And uh, Mr. Yonkai and Mr. Cartwright, maybe you can tell me, is there a legal group that can get together lawyers, ta other taxpayers, to, to pick, pick future judges, find some way of finding decent decent people to run for judge and not to have a 10-year term. Well, you know, these judges in the 1990s won on both tickets. They were voted uh, on a bipartisan ticket for both Republicans and Democrats. And we go back to the merit selection of judges, which uh, stopped, I guess, in the 1960s. So um, I, I guess uh, you could have a taxpayer advocate group that would, you know, make recommendations. But right now, it's a state law the way the judges are picked, right? It, it is. It's been a Pennsylvania tradition to uh, for the people to, the, to select the judges. And we depend on the federal prosecutors to root out this kind of corruption. It's a black eye for all of Luzerne County and all of us who work in the justice system. We're going to talk about that black eye and some of its ramifications. More at 7. The Law on You is coming up next.